today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're taking a look at a Carl Martin product. We've done a couple other Carl Martin pedals, but before we get into that, I want to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification button so you know what we're up to. Your interaction with us helps us interact with great companies like Carl Martin and bring what we hope is interesting content. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we've done the uh, Carl Martin, uh, sorry, I looked it up a minute ago, it's their Spring Reverb, the Headroom. We did a video on that. We've also done a video on the uh, Ottawa Vintage Optical Envelope. We love this pedal. It was part of our Shakedown Sound Right, series. it's a great pedal. But today, we're looking at another Carl Martin product that they were kind enough to help us out with. It is the OctaSwitch. It is the strip. The strip. And it is a big strip. It is. And so... Why did we get this? Right. I've been, I've been looking for a programmable switcher for a while. Mm -hmm. um, we did episodes on our pedal boards a while ago. Your non-pedal board, <laughs> pedal board, everything on the carpet. And then my, like, this giant thing that's, you know, in three parts that I could, I thought, hey, if it's going to stay there anyway, I can make it as big as I want. Sure. Put it out so it's easy to access everything and then bring parts of it home or whatever. Has a 10 loop switcher on it that uh, I think Drew Swindle called it a dumb switcher because it doesn't, there's no programmability to mm -hmm. it. Um, so I wanted to find a programmable switcher to make a new pedal board. So this would almost be like the first episode in a series, if you would, on making a pedal board. And we have to do Pats. We've been talking about doing Pats forever. And he's probably like, why are we doing mine? Because I waited too long. Yeah, you gotta get motivated. Um, <laughs> and I know that that board's gonna need to be moved around. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling like it needs to be done because if you tried to move it now, there's there's power supplies falling off the back of it. There's like, it's so rack right And now. I don't wanna mess up your rhythm, but part of my paralysis through analysis is, wow, what would it look like? How would I do it? But you found something that you can go on and go to a... Right, yeah, and we'll get to that. Okay, I do. Yeah, we're gonna get to that in one second. Um, I had a couple criteria. I knew I wanted a programmable loop switcher. Here are my criteria. Had to be easy. Maybe you can relate. Had to be able to access a live mode. What do I mean? Um, some guys are really good at like, hey, we're going to do this song. And it has this type of delay and this type of reverb. And I'm going to set up my right. MIDI and my timeline and my MIDI and my blue, big sky or whatever. And for every song, they do all the MIDI presets and they put it into the looper and they hit the bank button and loop program whatever program one is their first program two is their chorus program three is a solo i don't do that <laughs> like neither one of us are ever going to do that um we're not playing from a standpoint of like hey let's learn every part and nail every guitar sound we're playing like hey what moves us at the moment mm -hmm. and one week an envelope filter might sound really good here and the next week it might not so we want to have some capabilities still run live mode to be able to like pick the loops, not pick the program, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted some MIDI capability, because even though I just said we don't do that, I do have a couple pedals, like for instance, the new uh, reverb pedal from Walrus. There's like two presets on that that I use pretty regularly, and it requires me to step over to the back of the board and push two buttons at the same time, and I'm getting older and I'm not coordinated enough to do that half the time. So I wanted some MIDI capability to do that. Um, maybe the source audio, Nemesis, whatever. I wanted some basic MIDI that was understandable. Um, I want the ability to maybe do some secondary switching. So like if you have a pedal that has an A or B and you can use a remote switch to switch between them. Um, or maybe you have an amp with two channels and you want to do some remote switching. I wanted that. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted something that would fit on a pedal board because I have this giant pedal board I wanted to strip it down. Right. And so the Octa Switch hits those things in spades, four out of five. The fifth one, the size one, it's long, right? But it's thin. So I think it will fit nicely across the front of a board. The length of it's still going to dictate a fairly big board. If you go to, you mentioned earlier, it's pedalplanner.com, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's through Pedal Train Pedal Boards. You can load all of your pedals onto that, move them around. It's really, really cool. This would fit Novo 26, I think it is. This would fit perfectly at the bottom. If you jump it up to the Novo 32, you can put an expression pedal and a wall pedal next to it. 
So the option is, um, do I go to pedal train? What pedal board do I use if I do, or what pedal board do I use if I don't? And then do I want to put a watt pedal and an expression pedal on the same board or maybe do like a sidecar? Man, that was a lot, I'm sorry. But that explains why we landed on this one. Right. And they were super easy to work with. It got here way faster than it could should have. And here we are. Right. So let's let's just get into it and set it up. I've put down five pedals. So we got the direct drive for our overdrive. We have the revival trim for another overdrive or tremolo or and tremolo. Um, the M1 modulation machine for some modulation. The carbon copy delay and Matthew's effects um, astronomer for some reverb. And we're just going to make a bunch of programs and show you how this can control some of those secondary features, how it can control two amps. Um, Which is the Tyler JT22 and the Fender Hot Rod. And get into it. Here is Silver Sky. So this is I literally see. how easy it is. And right now you'll notice no matter what program I pick, there's no loops lit up because nothing is programmed. Blanked out. All the dip switches are all... We stripped the strip. Yes. <laughs> so, program one. If it's me, I'm like, hey, I always have my direct drive on and I always have a delay on, so let's do it. If pad hits, there's a switch over here called instant access. This clicks us into the live mode of program one. And I can say I want loop one, which is the direct drive. And I want loop seven, which is the carbon copy. Now, if I would turn off instant access, it would go back to what saved. But before we do that, there's a little switch over by Pat that says store. He's going to hit that. It's stored program one. The only other thing we're going to do is up here, you see two outputs. They're both lit up. So both amps are working right now. I want to turn off the fender amp. So switch number one and output two, Pat's going to push that to off and that's going to turn off the fender amp. Okay. And so now we're just in the Tyler. I hear the fender. There you go. There you go. All right. So maybe I want to do the same thing, but have it go through the Fender amp. Maybe I want to use a different amp. So maybe I have two amps on stage. I'm not running them stereo. Maybe I'm switching between them. Just to show you that that can be done, I'm going to hit loop two. Pat's going to hit instant access. I'm going to turn on the loops for the direct drive and the loop for the carbon copy. So now in output one should be, yeah, that's the one you turned off, right? Mm -hmm. So only output two is showing. Mm -hmm. So I'll let him play, and then I'm actually going to switch back and forth, and you're going to hear it go between the two amps. Um, and you know what I'm going to do? Because I don't think we're going to come back and use output to. I'm not going to use that. Again. Okay. So I'm just going to turn that off. So the only channel that's going to flip over to the Fender is going to be output to. All right. So let's talk about live mode. What does that mean? I call it live mode. I don't know. Uh, they call it instant access. What does that mean? So we have loop one. I'm back on loop one. We have the direct drive and we have the carbon copy delay in there. But maybe we're playing or in a live situation and we're in that loop, but man, it would be really nice to have a little bit more reverb. So in loop eight, we have a reverb pedal. All we have to do is hit the instant access button. And then if Pat hits loop eight, it just added the reverb to this. Store? Yeah, don't store it. Not store it. Don't store it. And then if he plays a little bit, you'll hear the reverb in. We do 
didn't set it up to be over exaggerated at all. <laughs> no. All right. So he didn't hit store because maybe I, I mean I don't want to mess with that loop. I just wanted to add reverb. I could press eight again to turn it off, whatever. I could press another button to turn on another loop. But when he hits instant access again and turns it off, you'll see we're still in loop one, program one, loop one and seven. Direct drive and carbon copy. We're back to where we were. Back to where we Brings were. Brings us back to. So you can have like, I, I, I see the possibility to have like kind of these base palettes, mm -hmm. maybe if you mm -hmm. would. Mm -hmm. And that I can click on this and it's going to set a couple things up. And then I can hit the live mode and add and subtract on top of that. And we could take the drive out too. Like we could go to live mode and take, like we can go to live, instant access and go, oh, I didn't want the drive there. And then when we turn instant access off, Back. Yeah, back to where we were. Cool. All right. So one of the other big things was, hey, I want to be able to do some basic MIDI. And I watched a couple of videos on this. I wanted to explain this. It's really, really simple to understand. Um, if you have a device that has MIDI, you have presets that are assigned to channels. You have those eight channels right here in front of you. Channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we look at the M1, trying to get rid of some of the hum. If you look at the M1, it has three preset banks, each with three. Mm -hmm. That's zero through eight. So bank one is zero, one, two. Bank two is three, four, five. You get it. So if I click bank three, that might turn blue. If I click bank four, that line turn light turn red. Five turn green. So you access eight preset in each bank. Right. So six back to blue. So let's do this. I'm going to hit four. If you can hit live mode, we're going to work here. He hits four, he hits live mode. I'm going to put that in loop three, hit store. You don't have to hold it, you just have to press it. It took me a while on that. Five live mode. Add the M1, hit store. Six, live mode. Add the M1, hit store. We'll see if this works. If you should hear three totally different sounds. So if I'm in loop three now, it was four. So we got that Leslie sound. <laughs> we had a phaser. And we had tremolo. And tremolo. So as long as you know what preset number, like what preset, what number it is. And I just looked at the owner's manual. I mean, it really, really, it wasn't that hard. Looked at the owner's manual. It told me what the presets were for each color and each bank. Now I can line those up. And it's actually even easier than that. If I would just go to bank eight, that's preset eight. And I could just dial in the pedal and then save it. Right. Dial in the pedal, save it here into the preset, and then it will it will link to eight. So a MIDI cable coming out of the octa switch into that. So now we can control that. Really cool, really simple. Don't have to be a MIDI expert. Not a MIDI expert, but I wanted to be able to dabble in it a little bit. All right. Another really cool feature. I'm going to put the revival trim in loop seven. We have nothing there. So let's put the revival trim there. If you hit instant access, that I believe, cross my fingers, is number two. Hit store. Cool. Revival Trend has a drive in it and a tremolo. You can turn the tremolo off and just have the drive, 
Let's do that in bank eight. So if I hit bank eight, instant access, put number two in, and store. Now we have, it's gonna sound the same though. How do we turn that off? Well, that's where these four things come in. So we have external one, two, three, and four. Um, and then there's a dip switch. There's eight dip switches that go with each channel. This is where you can, can control like channel switching in your amp, you can control whatever. We have a TRS table coming out of number one into the revival trim. It is off right now, the dip switch is off. If we slide that dip switch number eight up to on, notice the light on the revival trim changed. So now I'll jump back and forth between channel seven and eight and you'll hear it with trim along with that. Do I have to save it or no? No, you don't, not for that. Yeah, there you go. Let's dive into the live mode a little bit more. Uh, and we're gonna do that by adding some reverb. And I think we're gonna add, we're gonna add the reverb to like that nice um, tremolo sound coming from the M1. So right now, program six, all it is is the M1 in the pro in the in the tremolo. If you want to hear what that sounds like. So cool, we're playing live, tremolo sounds nice. It'd be nice to add a little bit of reverb to that. If I hit instant access and add loop eight of the Matthews effect. Now, I've stored that in there. You have to be a little careful. Mm -hmm. um, when we when I set up, all right, here are the pedals we're going to use. I was like, let's look for pedals that do these different things. So just like the revival drive, if I go over to eight, it's turning off the tremolo. If I go to seven, it has a tremolo on. It's working perfectly because the type of input that's looking for is the type of output the board's putting out. On the Matthews effects, it's a little bit different because, and I'm not, I'm not going to try and explain whether it, this is setting normally open, normally closed, and that's looking for normally open, normally mm -hmm. closed, but the two aren't lining up. And you can prove that because if I go back to six now, that top light came on, so now we have the big long delay on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I leave six and go back to it, the light goes off. And we have the short delay. Mm -hmm. So, bypass the noise coming out of it. That's not the car I'm working, that's, no, that's, that's us. Um, so, it's working the way it should. It's just the signal that, you know, we were hoping, oh, if we flip this dip switch up over here, Whenever we go to six, it's gonna turn on the second channel of the Matthews effects. And whenever we go to three, it's gonna turn it off and it's not working that way. Um, so you need to look at, like if you have a pedal that can do that, mm -hmm. take the, you just need to look at what it's taking and it would say in the owner's manual, what kind of external signal it's looking for and match that up with this. Um, I think that's I think that's the bottom line. Right. Uh, but I mean, I guess it could be kind of cool. You never know what you're gonna get. You get some <laughs> flips back and forth. Couple things that we're missing. Um, I think we did everything like the pedals and showing you how to turn them, program them and stuff. And yeah, and how you could go there. into instant access mode and turn things off and on at, from your wherever you have your baseline of your loop and add and subtract. So, one switch that we did not mention is this mute switch. And so, right now, it's a mute. So if you push it, it's mute. There's a little button between the two 
Yeah. Now it's a bypass. It's bypassed everything on the board. Right. So we're literally going guitar, collar mountain, out of it, into the amp. None of the pedals are in the loop. So you can do that. I mean, you could use, if you have like a, a always on tuner, the mute might be nice. If you don't have an always on tuner, maybe if you have a couple pedals that are out before this or not in this loop and you want to be able to just kind of get those isolated or whatever, you know, or you just want to bypass everything and just be going straight into your amp. Um, that's the Brody switch. Um, <laughs> yes. over, See how these pedals? Let me make them go away. Click. <laughs> over here, there's another little switch on the back. Yeah. This is the input. This is a buffer. Yeah. Um, so if I turn that off, let's, yeah, if I turn that off, we don't have anything in the loop right now, do we? No, Just a little carbon copy, so that's all right. I'm gonna turn it off if you play a little bit. Oh, we got the barber, the barber showed up. Looking for, well, let's do this. We'll go to loop one. Instant access. I'm going to turn off the delay. I'm going to turn off. the amps two feet behind us but we have a long cable going into this we have a long cable coming out going around the room back to that so we have long cable runs here and you can hear the impact of that yeah, you can hear the top end come back so that's really nice um so anyway that's i think that's it i think we covered the major things mm -hmm. uh one thing that we didn't talk about is stereo capability for cable method stuff if you look here on the switcher we have another input and send um and we have these loops here and like kind of highlighted mm -hmm. and closed in that grouping right so that would be your where we can send that group out to like an effects loop on an amp if you want to so then you can actually program in your switcher what's hitting the effects loop of the amp what's hitting the front of the amp i think there's some stereo capabilities somehow i'm not really i, I probably shouldn't say that um because we never think about stereo rigs because when we play live we don't have a stereo rig right um So I can program whatever loops I want in whatever program. I can hit instant access and add or take away from those. When I turn it back off, it goes back to what I had programmed. Um, if I hit the store button, it stores it. I can set up MIDI's based on you know that one channel. Um, I think it's channel one of MIDI sending out these four, eight programs. Um, it's all there. You bypass the entire thing. Bypass the entire thing. Put in an effects bu buffer. Um, mute the entire thing or run multiple amps. We said about like channel two, you could hook that up to like uh, Walrus's, um, is it ASC? ASC one, the yeah. amp simulator or mm -hmm. the Strive in Iridium or mm -hmm. those new ones from, uh, that everybody's raving about right now. I forget where who made them, that's terrible. I want to say Origin, but it's not Origin. <laughs> it's, um, but it's another company kind of mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm talking about? They make like a Fender I'm one and it's just escaping me. Um, but if you want to do an amp simulator, you could run to out the front of the house through channel two, channel one, you could go back to your amp. So many possibilities, but I think, I, I really think for like guys that are just going out and they have a bunch of pedals, they want to get some control over them, mm -hmm. but you know, they're playing live. Maybe they're playing their own original music they, they're building as they go. And they're not like, I want to program you know. Yeah, if you're in a house of worship, maybe you'll program by song title, look at your set for that week. If you're in a pubs and club band, you might have, you know, jump <laughs> loaded in there. If you're going to play some Van Halen covers, you just a flip of a switch, go right down your set list. That's not what we were looking for. And Right. I think this is more for the guy yeah. that's like, I want to have a lot of flexibility. Control and flexibility. But I'm, I'm it, you know, I might, I might want to have a channel. I haven't figured it out yet. We'll show it to you someday when we do. But like I might channel eight might be like, hey, that has the big delay, the big reverb with some shimmer on it. That's the foundation of that mm -hmm. big patty mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. And then I can click to eight and then I want to add a drive or I want to add something. I can click live access and add it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like programs might be kind of foundational kind of sounds. All right. Like I'm going to have these things happening 
And then still have the option to click that. You think you'll have one that's just a direct drive and a delay on a, on a one, two, three repeat? Yeah, it'll probably be the first five channels that, will yeah. just be yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just be that. And then also like a fuzz pedal that's before this. Yeah. Right. So if I, so I hit bypass and hit the fuzz, I might put my envelope filter, the Carl, the Carl Martin envelope filter, or or something like that, like right here in front of it, so I can just add that to whatever loop is on. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't know, because I might have more than eight pedals that I want to put on this board. <laughs> My guess is yes. So anyway, uh, anything to add? I think it's great. I, it's 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 very uh, user-friendly. It's it's a, I'm looking at it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff I figured out intuitively. There's a couple other things I'd have to sit here and flip some dip switches and get my head rewrapped around it. But I think it's it's great. I think it, like you said, you had like four or five criteria. It hit four of the five, the size being the one. Which but, you hit it, it just uh, yeah, it, yeah. But, but are you going to be able to get eight switches in? Right. No, and they're going to be stacked if not, and it's going to be a whole thing. So I, I think it's great. It's really cool that they they, they jumped in and, and and helped when you reached out to them for this, and it's going to be an ongoing <laughs> learning curve, and also the rest of how to build a pedal board. Right. I mean, if you think about it, if you were going to get something like the Bossy S eight. You'd cut this in half and make it twice as big. Right. So I don't think it's any smaller or any bigger than it's longer. It takes up less room. So you're talking about kind of one strip. Yeah. And you still have enough room behind it for two rows of pedals. Mm -hmm. As opposed to having like this big kind of thing over here on half. Like maybe that could get you a shorter board where you still get a wall pedal on it. This is going to make your board a little bit longer. Um, but I mean... I like, I like everything, everything's right there at the edge of your pedal board in a row. That's mm -hmm. really, really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to be step. And then hopefully, you know, I'm thinking drives in the back because I'm not going to tweak those and step on them very much. And then maybe if like the source audio nemesis, we're going to stick that kind of up here towards the front so I can reach over it and hit. A button if I have to, or maybe a tap tempo right over there in the corner where I can reach over it and hit the tap. Or tempo something button. that's controlling a Leslie that you can ramp it. Like right. it would be something close enough that you could hit it to ramp it up and down. Right. So something like that that yeah. maybe needs mm -hmm. that extra anything that in that first row behind, which still isn't that far back. No, uncoordinated people. <laughs> so I mean, with that, I think you know that's the octa switch. More to come. We're gonna get into the board. We'll get into what cables we're using. I'm sorry about the mess. It was really a stretch to find enough cables. We would have put, we would have filled up all eight of these, right. but it was a stretch to find enough cables that weren't on other pedal boards to like get these in a kind of semi coherent, not complete utter mess for the demo. Um, so we'll talk about cables. We'll talk about power cables and um, right. how to make some of that stuff and how to solder some of that stuff and what board we end up using and, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a whole series on how to make a pedal board, more just, you know. Documenting our, our journey. journey, which hopefully maybe you can pick up something from. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking the subscribe button, hitting the notification bell. Uh, like Pat said in the, in the beginning, anytime you interact with the show, it really helps us out. It helps us form those relationships, which allow us to bring, I think, really awesome content in that we get to share with you. And so with that, I'm PJ on behalf of the beard reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear.